Hello Year 10, um, so this is our last lesson on the bioenergetics topic, so um, some of the things that might come up here might bring in other topics and things like that. Um, so um, what we're going to look at is metabolism and the liver, and the key thing we're going to do is make sure you know what the term metabolism is, um, identify some reactions and sort of think about where they happen, distinguish between anabolic and catabolic reactions, now you don't actually need to know these terms, anabolic and catabolic, but they're really useful biological terms um, and we'll talk about those in a bit later on. Um, identify some bits and pieces in the liver um, and look at the functions of the liver and make links to other topics, as I said before. So the first little activity, little starter is, well, what's metabolism? Um, you've already covered a number of metabolic reactions. Can you recall any? So just have a think just for a minute. Okay. So hopefully you pulled out things like respiration, photosynthesis, protein synthesis, in fact any reaction where we're making big things. We already talked about that with the respiration topic when we're talking about the uses of energy and in photosynthesis we talked about the uses of glucose, that glucose being converted into other molecules, um, all of those things will be metabolic reactions. So metabolism is the sum of all the chemical reactions occurring um, in a cell or in the body. Okay, and these reactions are generally all controlled by enzymes. And in fact, lots of the met uh, meta metabolic processes we talk about are really complex pathways and not single steps. So actually, we've learned photosynthesis and respiration. We've learned them as a single step, and they're actually not. So those of you who are going to study biology further on at A level, um, you will find out all about that. Um, but the key thing is they are controlled by enzymes. Um, and um, some will require an input of energy that will come from respiration or maybe from the sun, for example, photosynthesis. Um, and there are different types of metabolic reactions. So anabolic reactions, sometimes called anabolism, so as the, pro as the process, is building larger molecules from smaller ones. Um, and often that requires an energy input. So for GCSE, building larger molecules from smaller ones is, is fine. Um, but anabolic, that's what it means, like anabolic steroids, like bodybuilders building muscles and things like that. And catabolic reactions are where you break larger molecules down into smaller ones. So respiration would be a good example of a catabolic reaction. Um, and that, re that one actually releases energy, and some catabolic reactions release energy as well. Um, and anabolic reaction, a good example would be photosynthesis, because um, you're building larger molecules from small ones, um, and that requires an input of energy in terms of light from the sun. Now there's another term that you might come across called your basal metabolic rate and that's the rate at which you do chemical reactions which is really a measure of the rate of respiration when you are at rest. Um, so we uh, might have mentioned that before when we were doing the work on respiration. So you've got a worksheet associated with this lesson. Have a go at answering questions one to three from the worksheet. As we go through any of the worksheet questions, obviously you can add any extra detail that you want. So let's look at some metabolic reactions then. So I've colour coded these, so as they come up you can distinguish between catabolic and anabolic reactions. So um, metabolism, we've got respiration, obviously. We've got photosynthesis, conversion of glucose into starch in plants conversion of glucose into cellulose to make cell walls, for example, in plants. Um, conversion of glucose into glycogen in the muscle and in the liver. So remember, glycogen is like starch. It's an energy storage molecule like starch, but you find it in animals. Um, formation of lipids from fatty acids, three fatty acids in glycerol. Um, formation of amino acids using nitrates from the soil um, in plants and glucose would be another thing happening in plants. But um, you could have protein synthesis as well um, there too. Okay, so I've missed off. Um, breakdown of excess amino acids. So actually in humans, if we have, and if most animals, if we eat too much protein and we can't use it all, can't use all the amino acids in the protein that we eat and then digest and absorb into our blood, then our body has to break them down. We can't store amino acids unless we're going to use them to make proteins with. So if we break amino acids down, we make a toxic chemical called urea um, and then we excrete that um, from the kidneys um, and actually the breakdown of um, amino acids occurs in the liver um, and also digestion okay so digestion occurs 
um, is a metabolic reaction because it's involving enzymes um, and it's breaking down molecules. So the ones in green here are all um, anabolic reactions building molecules up. And remember we could have in protein synthesis here as well using amino acids um, from your diet or your plant using amino acids they've made would also be an anabolic reaction here. So I've missed off. Um, and then we've got these are the catabolic reactions breaking down larger molecules into smaller ones okay so you could have a go at answering question four from the worksheet there apologies for spelling questions with the grimness okay let's have a think about the liver then so the liver is a really really important organ in your body um, because it actually does huge amounts of metabolic um, reactions to do with your blood. So it's the lar largest internal organ in your body. Your skin is the largest organ, uh, but internally it's the largest organ inside and it's about 3 to 4% of your body mass. It's quite large, um, about 1.5 kilograms. It's quite big. Um, it has really good blood supply and actually gets over a litre of blood per minute. So it's, it's quite a big portion of that of your cardiac output um, goes through your liver um, and it has two blood vessels supplying it actually it has a, the hepatic artery and another um, blood vessel called the hepatic portal vein which goes from the digestive system to the liver um, so it's unusual you'll obviously also have blood vessel removing blood which is the hepatic vein um, now it has over 500 different functions if you look it up in books um, and most of them are to do with maintaining constant body conditions, which is called homeostasis, which we'll look at in later lessons um, in year 11. Um, so it's really to do with processing the blood within the body. So it's, that's why so much blood goes through it. It's processing the blood, dealing with all the things that could be going on and trying to keep everything in your body under control, lots of things in your body under control. And because of that, it's very, very metabolically active. All right. Um, so lots of respiration going on here, lots of aerobic respiration. The liver itself, you can actually lose parts of your liver um, and they will regrow. So the liver is an unusual body organ in that it can regenerate. Um, so that means you can donate part of your liver to somebody else in a transplant um, and actually your liver will regrow, um, which is really useful. Obviously you must have stem cells in there that can do that, um, but it's really useful if there is damage it can recover. But if you do damage your liver a lot, say with too much alcohol, you can get cirrhosis of the liver, which is sort of damage, scarring to the liver tissue and fattiness of the liver. That can have permanent damage in the long run if it's not reversed. So let's just have a look at how the liver sort of laid out in terms of blood vessels. You don't need to know any detail about the internals of the liver or anything like that. And in fact, this is possibly even more than you need. So we have got three blood vessels and then we've also got a duct, a tube, that if you remember from the digestive system that comes from the liver going to the small intestine which also has the pancreas associated with it and the gallbladder and that's shown outside the liver here but it's actually sort of part of it really um, so you've got the hepatic artery bringing in high concentrations of oxygen oxygenated blood coming in so it's bringing the blood from that's come from the heart um, directly um, so it'll be oxygenated bring oxygen to, to allow for loads of aerobic respiration you've got the hepatic portal vein which is going to be carrying blood from the digestive system so this we have lots of digested and then absorbed material so glucose amino acids minerals all those things that have been absorbed after they've been digested in the small intestine actually go from the small intestine to the liver they don't go straight back to the heart because the liver is going to process a lot of this first okay and the amount in the amount of the concentration of glucose amino acids and all those sorts of things varies um, depending on what you've eaten and when you've eaten. Um, you've then got the hepatic vein which carries the deoxygenated blood to have much less oxygen in it, much more carbon dioxide back towards the heart um, and obviously the levels of glucose and amino acids will have changed because the liver will have adjusted them and changed them so they'll be definitely different from what came in from the um, hepatic portal vein and different from the hepatic artery as well. So these are your blood vessels and then you've also got the bile duct which carries that bile which was made in the liver stored in the gall stored in the gallbladder and will travel down the um, bile duct um, mixed with the pancreatic juice and go into the small intestine remember bile's job is to 
um, neutralize some of the acid coming from the stomach, but also the bile is remembering to emulsify, it breaks that fat into tiny droplets to increase its surface area for enzymes. So the lipase enzyme works faster. Have a go at answering question five on the sheet using these labels and anything I've just talked about. Okay, let's have a look at some of the functions of the liver then in a little bit more detail. We've already talked about quite a lot of them, but the next slides is going to summarise them. So, key thing. One of the things you do when you did uh, exercise, remember you make um, lactic acid um, when you do anaerobic respiration. So the breakdown of lactic acid is really important function of the liver. Um, so it's transported to the um, liver from the muscles. Um, it's converted back into glucose and then it can be respired aerobically. And remember that, that whole process requires oxygen. That's you paying off your oxygen debt. And actually if there's too much glucose and it's not going to be used, it will be used to control your blood glucose and it will be converted into glycogen, so excess glucose, either from lactic acid or from excess glucose that's been absorbed in the digestive system, will be converted to glycogen and stored. Okay, so glycogen is storage polysaccharide-like starch. Okay, and um, so that is controlled by hormones. Um, so insulin, for example, will tell the liver to take more glucose out of your blood and store it as glycogen. But equally. Imagine you're doing lots of exercise or you haven't eaten for a while and your blood glucose level is falling, that glycogen store can be broken back down into glucose and secreted into the blood. So that's actually another metabolic process there. Okay, breakdown of glycogen into glucose is one of the breakdown reactions. Okay. You've also got detoxification. So one of the massive jobs of the liver is to break down toxic substances. People talk about being on a detox and all this stuff you can do to detoxify your body. It's all utter rubbish. Your liver's perfectly good at doing this in combination with your kidneys. Um, so if you drink alcohol, the liver will break down the alcohol to make it safe, breaks down to um, carbon dioxide and water, basically. Um, it can have negative impacts in that it affects your fat metabolism, so it can cause a buildup of fat in your liver um, you get fatty liver if you drink too much alcohol and also too much alcohol is toxic and can damage the liver and cause scarring and you get cirrhosis of the liver but generally a little bit of alcohol your liver can deal with it similarly break down drugs like paracetamol and ibuprofen all of those things so paracetamol um, can be broken down safely by your liver as long as you don't take too much if you take too much actually there's a different it, it can't go fast enough and a different metabolic pathway happens that actually poisons your liver and actually Paracetamol poisoning is very, very dangerous, um, can lead, will lead to liver failure um, or very significant damage to your liver. So it's not a good idea. That's why you must always you know, only ever take the dosage recommended on the packets for paracetamol. So detoxification, big job of liver. Deamination, I've already mentioned. So deamination is this process of breaking down excess amino acids and converting it to urea. It's because amino acids are made of um, an organic acid and an amine group um, and so deamination is removal of the amine group which would make ammonia which is then which is really really toxic and then converts into urea so there's a nice complex metabolic pathway there you can just have breakdown of amino acids into urea and then it puts that urea into the blood um, so that your kidneys can get rid of it because your liver doesn't, can't excrete it directly so it goes into your blood and then your kidneys will get rid of it. Um, also, things like breaking down red blood cells, so excess uh, old red blood cells get broken down, they can store the um, iron in the liver and actually it makes chemicals, um, waste chemicals that are pigments called bilirubin and biliverdin, they actually go into the bile and they make, um, they'll go down into your small intestine, so actually some of the secretions in bile are also to do with um, getting rid of waste products from the body. It's actually what makes your feces brown. Um, otherwise your feces would be white, so you know if you've got a blocked bile duct, if your feces are coming out very, very pale. Anyway, um, production of bile, as we've already talked about, stored in the gallbladder, passes down the bile duct in the small intestine, and emulsifies fat, and also um, neutralizes the stomach acid, stomach acid that is coming into the small intestine. So, you can have a go at doing question six from the worksheet now. Okay, so once you've done all those notes, the worksheet should have hopefully made your notes on this topic. Have a go at the extension tasks on the worksheet. So questions seven, eight or nine, 
and submit them to me for assessment. That'd be great. Thank you.